The honey badger is a real king of beasts who can win any fight. The cheetah cubs, on the contrary, are one of the most vulnerable animals in Africa. Literally any predator can kill them. For many years, cheetahs were jealous of honey badgers, until one random event allowed them to deceive everyone. You know how it goes. If you get burned by the iron once, for the rest of your life, you'll remember it's better not to touch this surface, because it hurts. So honey badgers are something like the irons of the animal world. While you probably know what they're capable of and saw videos where honey badgers take on literally everyone. I wouldn't be surprised if one day they attacked a tank and bit it because this tank was making too much noise. But not only people have long been aware of what honey badgers can do, nobody wants to mess with them as these guys are too tough. Cheetahs know this just as well as others, so they learn to pretend to be honey badgers. Seriously, if you look closely at cheetah cubs, you'll see their color is not quite normal. Very light above, very dark below. Does it remind you of anything? What could be a better disguise than a costume of an animal everyone is scared of? No one will dare attack your cub if it looks like a honey badger. Please don't let it be a honey badger. Please don't let it be a honey badger. Let it be a cheetah cub or a snake, just not a honey badger. Not like the last time. Pretending to be a honey badger helps even against lions, who generally don't consider cheetahs as food. Wait, why do they hunt them then? Well, let's just say lions know how to plan their future. Together with cheetahs, they occupy the same ecological niche, which means they compete for food. If there are fewer cheetahs, the lions will get all the antelopes. But the lions can't take on an adult cheetah, it'll simply run away from them. So they need to fix the problem before it appears and get the cubs. But not these ones. These animals look like honey badgers, so it's better not to mess with them. Why are there adult cheetahs nearby, though? Okay, let's not judge the lions. It's really easy to confuse little cheetahs with honey badgers, especially from a distance and without paying attention to the details. No one cares that they not only belong to different species, but aren't even related. When it comes to this level of mimicry, such differences become negligible. Take as an example the fact that an adult honey badger reaches 20 inches in length and cheetahs reach roughly the same size when they are about 4 months old. As for the fact that they have completely different tails, hey lion, what do you think about this? Well, that's what I thought. What about the honey badgers? I mean, they should have noticed that cheetah cubs cosplay them regularly without any Comic-Con. Honestly, I didn't find any scientific data, research, or even eyewitness accounts, even though there are eyewitnesses who saw honey badgers attacking males and biting off, well, their most precious body part. But I think that the honey badgers themselves can fall for this disguise until they come closer and sniff. Oh, Steve, hello. Let's go fight everyone. <laughs> This one doesn't smell like Steve. <laughs> honey badgers actually have quite a keen sense of smell. They find all their prey precisely because of it. But their taste preferences, well, let's just say they're quite specific. And I don't even mean honey badgers love for venomous snakes, which they eat just as casually as people eat spaghetti. After all, we all have a passion for a certain food that no one else shares. Tomato juice, blue cheese, pickled herring. But honey badgers eat everything including insects, amphibians, birds, their eggs, mammals of different sizes, fruits, berries, roots, maybe mushrooms and trees too. Who knows? They swallow the prey whole, including skin, fur, feathers, meat, and bones. Well, when it comes to large prey, honey badgers usually attack sheep and goats, not cheetahs, but who would say anything if a honey badger decided to change his diet a bit? I wouldn't risk it. They say that sometimes honey badgers even ravage human cemeteries. I'd not be surprised if honey badgers turn out to be an inspiration for ghouls and other monsters made up by people. It doesn't matter whether honey badgers usually hunt cheetahs or not. I'm not even sure the honey badger fights only those animals he's about to eat, because sometimes his opponents are way too big. In Etosha National Park, a honey badger who attacked an antelope at a watering hole was captured on camera. He just walked up and attacked. I don't know, maybe the antelope stomped loudly while the honey badger was sleeping? Gave him a bad look or something like that? The idea to fight a creature that is 10 times your size doesn't seem very good. Just take a look at these horns. But the honey badger, tossed 20 feet up into the air by the antelope, was not hurt at all. All he did when he landed is got up, shook off, then charged into battle again. But honey badgers aren't only aggressive and tough. They also have incredibly thick skin. 
It's quite elastic, plus it's difficult to bite through it no matter who tries it. A snake, a dog, or a lion. Hell, a honey badger's skin can take a few machete blows. Don't forget about invulnerability to arrows and spears, and it becomes clear why the honey badgers are so brave. Why should they be afraid with skills like that? Seems like the only way to deal with them is to shoot them in the head with a gun, if you're lucky enough. Is this the best you can do? Well, who would get into a fight with such an animal? It's pointless. It's enough to check the approximate statistics of fights and defeats to realize why the cheetahs choose this disguise. See for yourself. The honey badger can easily beat the wolverine, perhaps even the one played by Hugh Jackman. He'll survive the fight with a leopard, defeat the harpy eagle, he'll even survive a fight with a wolf. Only a crocodile can prevail over the honey badger, and that, I think, is only thanks to the force of its bite. Okay, it's clear now, no more questions when it comes to honey badgers. But why do cheetahs need disguise anyway? That is, it's clear when we talk about adults, they hunt, and during the hunt, you need to remain stealthy. That's why you need the camouflage color of fur. What about the cubs? Well, they don't have much of a chance to survive. Only about 17% of newborn cheetahs survive to adolescence. While the mother is hunting, little cheetahs have to hide in the tall grass, otherwise they'll become easy prey for, well, actually for anyone. This might have been an issue for a long time until there was a glitch in evolution and the first cheetah of an unusual color was born. I wonder how many variants of random mutation did nature go through before coming to this? Were there any brighter colors? Well, you must admit, such hair is just perfect for camouflage. Light and long on top, it allows you to blend in with the savanna. This area is called the mantle, and you'll never notice it in dried grass. How many cheetahs are there? One? Three? Ten? You never know for sure. Do you see the grass next to the house? Perhaps a couple of cheetahs are hiding there too. You never guess. But what about animals that haven't won their lucky ticket and never got free camouflage from evolution? Suffer and get eaten? Well, for most of the time, yes. If you can't hide from predators, you've lost the evolutionary race. Nothing personal, just natural selection. As a last resort, you can call an alpaca for help. These funny animals know a lot about protecting sheep, for one thing. Remember donkeys that do this job even better than dogs? Alpaca is another option. They hate foxes and drive them away from the herd. Moreover, alpacas understand that predators won't find lambs if they hide these lambs in the grass and stand on guard. Probably they realize they definitely can't pass off the lambs as honey badgers. If you can't disguise yourself as a honey badger, you can always pretend to be a bush. Wait, what? No, sheep don't do that, but deer often wrap grass, branches, and all sorts of ferns around their antlers. Scientists believe that this is a display of strength that should attract females and scare off rivals. Well, you know, not everyone dares to attack this thing. Hi, my name's Steve, and more than anything, I'm scared of the walking bushes. Thank you. See you later.